¿Cómo le va? Ah, más o menos. Sí. More menos than más. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait a minute. Before you start everything, what is this weird looking creature up there with a fuzzy gray? It's. Okay. Just checking. It looked ominous. Yeah. In this group, you never know what's going to show up. <clears throat> well, welcome back, Moors. We love you guys. We missed you. We are sure you are relaxed and have rested and are ready to go because we're not going to do anything. Everything's left to y'all. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start the equipment. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about Peter. I want to kind of do a, a little spiritual timeline with him, and uh, then I'll get into the scripture that I want to share from. But let's see. I haven't drawn this before, so let's see how I'm going to do this. Uh, That's the crooked cross. The old crooked cross. I know. Yeah. I'm sure you've sang that old hymn all the time, the old crooked cross. <laughs> um, basically, this little timeline is about Peter's experiences with the Lord. And when I say experiences, partially I'm relating to... Uh, you know, how he experienced the Lord and uh, some of it being tangible and some of it being more spiritual. But um, in it, there's a growth process that takes place with him. And this takes us, this will take us since Peter is, plays major in the Gospels. Uh, he played a major part in the book of Acts. Um, and then he has his own epistles. So we, we actually get sort of a lifespan in a certain sense. Because, I mean, at least we meet him in the Gospels when he first, a lifespan with Jesus anyway. And so the first aspect that I want to talk about is the Gospels, uh, and this is all dealing with, with Peter. Uh, the Gospels. And then over here, obviously, we're dealing with in the Gospels, the cross. So the first part is the Gospels, but the, this part that has the cross is the cross in the Gospels. And then this section over here is the book of Acts. And then this is his life as known, let me just put it. We'll just say his life as described in the epistles. Um, when he first started out, he met Jesus. And the, all the way up to the cross, um, he followed Jesus. He was with Jesus. And in a certain sense, you could say that a bunch of us, when we first got born again, it was kind of like we were with Jesus and we're walking with Jesus and that sort of thing. And the thing that he experienced the most at this first part was to see Jesus that was with him performing miracles and healings and just supernatural things. And that, that supernatural aspect was a huge part of that. And while with the Lord, he saw people raised from the dead. He saw 
thousands fed miraculously. He saw so many things that you and I have never seen. He saw. He was there. He experienced it. And um, so I'm going to call this section here, from Peter's point of view, I'm going to call this first section really good. <laughs> you know, they had a great time. Can you imagine? I mean, they had a great time with the Lord. And that time was um, uh, with Jesus. They were, it's not just all about the supernatural, but I mean, they got to hear Jesus teach. They got to walk with him. They got to see him outside of teaching. They got to see um, him relate to the group as well as to the individual himself, Peter. Um, and for him, and I believe for all the, the disciples that walked with him, except maybe one, uh, it was really good. <laughs> And um, the one is Judas, in case you couldn't figure out what, which one I was talking about there. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, so they're going, and their, their idea is that all of this stuff that's going on has to do with the kingdom, and it has to do with this is the way we're going to live. Jesus is going, he's the Messiah, and he's going to set up a kingdom, and he's going to set it up on this earth, and he's going, and we're going to be working with him, and we're going to experience the rest of our life. We're going to experience, you know, supernatural things, and we're going to be blessed, and all of these things. And that, that actually, that in itself, that section can be the basic thought of some Christians. They never leave that. That's, that's it. It's all about, you know, the Lord being with us, and him taking care of us, and him doing supernatural things, and um, and us getting to hear his word, and we're with Jesus, and, and they truly are with Jesus, but, but in a little different way as the progression goes along. <clears throat> and so then came, you know, then came the cross. And so in that next section there, it has the, a little symbol of the cross drawn in it. And all of a sudden, um, you, you could say, uh, you could say this section was also really, really what? Really bad. Uh, they all, basically all, except John, they all ran away. And they did not know what was going on. And to them, Jesus hanging on that cross was the worst, the, the worst actual thing that could have happened. The worst thing that could have happened. All right, now, just to just to remind you, within this really good time, within that time period, there was a lot of little particles of this really bad section here that Jesus kept throwing in there. He would throw in just little comments here and there, you know, throughout, and they wouldn't get it. You know, remember he would say stuff like, well, the Son of Man must, you know, go to Jerusalem and be, you know, badly treated and, you know, and then they'll kill him and stuff like that. Or, or, or um, you know, if any man follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. And anything that he spoke having to do with the cross is like, what? What? What is this? You know, and they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Uh, there's a lot of things they didn't get. I, I like the one where Jesus is talking in John 10, and he's talking about being the good shepherd. And he says, uh, you know, he says, I'm the good shepherd, and my sheep, you know, know my voice, and they follow me. And the, the scripture right after that says, and they understood none of these things that he said. Well, you're not a sheep then. You know, I mean, that would be the conclusion, because his sheep hear his voice and know. You know, we always read stuff and skip over that, but it's like, Okay, um, so there were these little points that, that came along, and, and, and Peter experienced one of the strongest one of those when Jesus said, you know, I must go to the cross and die, and da, 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 and Peter began to rebuke him and say, not so, Lord, which I say every time I say that, those two don't go together. You can't say, not so, Lord. 
If he's Lord, then it's so. And you learn to go with that, you know. And so, that, so uh, Peter's, you know, and he is, he's trying to protect Jesus. He's trying to protect Jesus, you know, and he loves Jesus. But his version of protection was to, to you know, well, Jesus' response sort of answers it all, doesn't it? You know, uh, get behind me, Satan, for thou savest the things that be of men and not of God. And, and in his mind, because he didn't know anything at that point, I'm sure he's thinking, are you crazy, Jesus? I'm savoring the things that be of God. You know, I'm, I'm trying to protect you from the cross. This is not good. This is really bad, you know. And in his heart and in his mind, um, he is standing up for the Lord. He is being bold and courageous and showing Jesus that I'm really, really on your side. And it's right after that that Jesus goes into the thing about, you know, except you, you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, you know, you're not my disciple. And in his mind, I'm sure he's going, I'm a disciple. You chose me. I'm one of the 12 following. We're, I'm, I'm a disciple. What does this take up the cross anyway? And so, so in the scope, now you have to picture his mind going through this. In the scope of things, this first section is all about good times, good events, good experiences, being with Jesus, you know, because it doesn't mention all the nights that, you know, they're walking different places and they stop somewhere and they make a fire and they all sit around there and they're talking and being with the Lord. It doesn't, it, you know, only mentions a few of those kind of things, really. Um, and, but there's all this time that he's getting constantly with the Lord and with others that love the Lord. And it's just a special, special, special time. And the only real bad thing in there was not the Pharisees and what they said, because they assumed that Jesus was the Messiah and therefore he's going to become the king and rule everything. And so the, 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 um, the only negatives were Jesus when he'd throw these little crosses in there, you know. And it's like, now you have to remember, these little crosses are really bad. Okay, that's the way, you know, that was the mindset, right? Really bad. So when Jesus would do it, they'd just go, you know, let's think about something else. Hey, let's go, let's go do another miracle, Jesus, you know. Kind of like a student in class trying to get the teacher's focus off of the pop test that they said they were going to give or something. Hey, what is, you know, they ask questions and, you know, the teacher gets sidetracked. Uh, not that I would have ever experienced that with our group, but um, except all the time. Um, but there is that, but, the, but there's that. But then when the cross really happened, in their minds, this is the end. This, and it's the end because, um, okay, why? Why is that the end in their mind? Okay, because he's gone, and the one that they were walking with is gone. Why else? Because the miracles are gone, and the... And the free food, <laughs> whatever, however you want to put it, and all of those things, they're gone. It's all, that, they're going, this is over with, because that aspect of the supernatural and all that, that was everything, and being with Jesus, you know. And with his death, you know, they didn't do any of them, you know. They only did, a, whatever they did, they did in his name, but they didn't do any of them. And so that's it. That's the end of it. So as you know, I mean, first of all, they ran and hid except John. But, you know, we go, oh, praise God, John is really, you know, he's standing there in front of the cross going, ah, this is horrible. Ah, you know, this is just, this is, it wasn't. This was the most wonderful, the most powerful picture of God 
that, that they'd ever seen, but nobody saw it as that. They just saw it as a disaster. Carolyn? Could you say that, it, it, that everything that they knew with their carnal eyes, and carnal mind, was gone? Because they had not yet seen right. spiritual. Right. I mean, every, you know, Carolyn said everything that they saw and knew with their carnal mind was gone, or the natural mind, however you want to put that. And, um, and they loved that. I mean, you know, okay, let's take Peter for an example. Before this, he was a fisherman. And we know he had a wife, right? Because she got sick and Jesus healed her. So his wife is thrilled because he's no longer coming home smelling like fish. Every night. And then you can't get it out of your clothes, you know. So she's going, you go with Jesus. You know, yes. <clears throat> uh, sorry, that wasn't in my notes. Or in, so far, I'm not using any notes. But anyway, so, um, so there's, this, there's this mindset. And, and, if you can, and if you can do more than hear, hear a story, but you can put yourself in that place, you can understand that. If you put yourself in that place... This, for a, an old fisherman, was one of the best things that could have ever happened to him. And everybody's starting to think he's, Jesus is the Messiah. And he's kind of like the right-hand guy right now. Now, James and John had other thoughts. So they snuck around and said, hey, you know, I know Peter's pretty big right now, but can me and John sit at your right hand and left hand? Anyway, so I'm sure Jesus was thrilled with that. Uh, <laughs> so, if, but if you, if, you're, if you can picture being Peter, as it were, in that situation, this, it was, and the supernatural said to him, this is God, right? This is God, because nobody else was doing that kind of stuff. All right, so, <clears throat> um, then the cross happens. They run, they hide. They're freaked out, <clears throat> um, and like I said, John's standing there, and he, you know, just because he's, his location is different than theirs doesn't mean he comprehends anymore because he's crying along with, with Mary and the other people that are there um, because to all of them, this is really bad, okay? This is really bad. All right, so they have a couple of days there that they have to, you know, deal with it. <coughs> and in John, uh, Peter says, I go fishing. Now, that's the King James. The actual Greek reads, I'm going back to fishing. That's what it says. I'm Because there's not, you know, this is it. I'm going back to my old job. You know, I'm... <sighs> I doubt I'm going to find any money in a fish's mouth anymore. I'm going to have to do this, this job, you know. So he, uh, you know, all the disciples are, you know, the ones that are with him, they go with him. And um, uh, then, you know, Jesus is raised from the dead, and they start getting uh, hints of that when the first morning, what we sometimes call resurrection morning, uh, that uh, Mary is at the tomb early and Jesus appears to her and she thinks he's a gardener and da 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 and, you know, and then finally she realizes it and he said, go tell the disciples that I'm risen. All right. Well, that didn't work real well because they, the guys weren't going to listen to a woman. See? But Jesus, that's who he picked. That's who he picked. And he picked because, they, you know, even when they ran there, they weren't going, oh, he's risen, yeah! You know, I mean, Peter and John ran there. And, you know, they're going, okay, you know, well, the women told us, that's what it, that's what it says, <laughs> the women told us. What is that supposed to mean? Yeah. 
No, I mean, really, what is that supposed to mean? They, did they hear from Jesus or not? That's the only question. And they did. So, um, so they, weren't, they weren't real in tune. I mean, I don't think that, the, that they really figured it out until they were fishing and Jesus showed up on the shore and, you know, somebody said, it's Jesus. Peter throws himself in the water and then swims ashore and Jesus cooked him breakfast or whatever it was, you know. This is good breakfast. It's Jesus. This is the way he used to cook with us. <clears throat> um, so, there's, so, so all of a sudden there's a turn. Now you get into the book of Acts. And it's a little bit different from this first one because now the, the Holy Spirit comes. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is in them. Okay, Jesus is in them, but the supernatural starts up again, right? Supernatural starts up again, book of Acts. So, um, you know, it's like, wow, you know, we're back, baby. You know, we got the band back together again. And they're all, you know, excited and all this stuff is going on and everything. And of course, you know, within that, we don't, we don't, we tend to read the book of Acts with rose-colored glasses. It would be good if you ever tried to read it in light of all the trouble. No, if you just, like if you had a red marker or something, you marked it. Every time there's troubles, you go, oh my God, this was tough all the time. And it was. And uh, all kind of junk was going on, you know. And, and for example, uh, James, the brother of John, he was kind of the leader early on. And they killed him right off. Just almost right off, they killed him. And they're kind of going, well, this isn't exactly like it was in the early days, you know. And the persecution started growing, and, you know, it got worse and worse. So, so there's that, that period of time. So in the book of Acts, and so in this place, I got my marker here, but I guess I could just put it here, give the cross a little more room. It's, uh, it's really good. So it was really good, really bad, really good. And they're going, this is great. It's slightly different. We got Jesus in us, so we're not going to lose him. God's still doing miracles. Um, but unbeknownst to them, there are things happening. There, there are things happening within that. They just think that they're trials. But it's some more of those little crosses. They may not understand that yet. Okay. They may not have gotten it yet. They may just see it as the miracles and all of that is God. And the bad stuff is the devil. And if it's bad, it's the devil. If it's good, it's bound to be God. Y'all better learn to not think that way because you're already deceived. <laughs> so they're in that time period again, and everything's going great. But even within that, that time period, there's, a, there's this little thing. Where do I keep putting this stuff? There, within there, there's this guy that pops up named Paul. And, you know, I don't know if you ever looked at the early teaching in the book of Acts, but it really wasn't a whole lot of the cross. <laughs> it was like, Jesus is risen, and, you know, a little bit of, yeah, it's, it's almost like double joy because we're, we're back, he's back, you know, and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, but when Paul shows up, he starts sharing and influencing them. And even Peter, in his epistle, one of his epistles, he says, you know, you know, listen to Brother Paul. He's kind of hard to understand. <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, I bear witness that there's something he's got. And Peter will also 
share the same stuff as we shall see shortly. So when it comes to the epistles then, Peter has been down the road for a long time at that point. And he has been with the Lord in different ways. Okay? So let's turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse 21, 1 Peter 2, 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. All right, so most, most Christians, the, uh, they view the life of Christ as the example. The life of Christ as the example. That's the example we're supposed to follow. But here, Peter's pointing to his death. That Jesus' death is the example for our life. You know, and I'm reading that and I'm going, ho, oh, because I'm realizing this is the guy that went through all this stuff. This is when all this started flashing into my, my memory and realizing that is a drastic change. And, you know, I'm not going to go into all that's there. And the good thing is, is that you can read all around it and everything. But it is, it is this reality of how you handle things by Christ crucified not just following the example of Jesus. So let's, let's talk about that just for a second. Following the example of Jesus. Most Christians, listen to me, most Christians follow the example of Jesus over here in the Gospels. They look at Jesus in the Gospels and they go, well, that's what Jesus did. And we're supposed to follow his example. So this is, this is the example. If, if he healed, we're supposed to heal. If he cast out demons, we're supposed to cast out demons. I got no problem with healing and casting out demons. But there is a progression that should take place. And I'll tell you what, this progression did take place in my life. It did. I started out in the ministry with Kenneth Copeland. You know, saw miracles and all kind of stuff. And woohoo! it was exciting. And, you know, all this stuff was going on. Just amazing, and it was amazing. And, you know, we still live off of, you know, this church couldn't survive without miracles. Just so you know, it couldn't. Just, just one proof is every time the offering plate goes around. <laughs> proof that we're surviving by miracles. Because <laughs> nobody ever puts anything in it. And so it's God, it's God, it's of God, and God takes care of us, and the Lord does. And so, it's, so I'm not voiding that out, but that's not the Jesus that we're supposed to be, you know, finding, drawing our example from. It's not. So Peter has, uh, you know, he, he looks to Christ crucified instead of Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, now come on. He knew Jesus of Nazareth. He walked with him. He would be incredibly persuaded to make Jesus of Nazareth, with all that happened in the Gospels, his example that he followed Jesus in. I'm following Jesus in this way. So, um, you know, uh, how would he make that leap? How would anyone make that leap? It's so foreign. It's so, you know, to say that it's, that it's his death. And I like the wording of this. It's, uh, let's see, even here until you call because Christ also suffered for us, Jesus left us an example, leaving us an example. Jesus left that, not Peter. 
He's saying Jesus left us this example. All right. Now, you say, well, we're having to take the word of Peter. Well, you know, and Paul and, and what we call the Bible. <laughs> you say, I ain't going to take the word of no man. How about God's word? You know? <laughs> Peter didn't leave us this example. Jesus said, as far as Peter understood, Jesus is leaving us the example of the cross as our example. All right. So that's a, that's a completely different change down here. It's, a, it's another reality of the cross. But it's the cross, or, or the, I, you know, I'd almost rather, instead of the cross, it is the cross, but it is more... crucified in us. Okay. Because that's it. The, everything he's talking about here is, you know, we don't like this, the, the areas that he's talking about, but he's talking about servants be submitted to your, you know, masters, even to the bad and whatever. And he's calling that the cross. Amen. He's calling that uh, Jesus standing before Pilate and they're slapping him and they're beating him and they're accusing him and every foul thing. And Jesus, Jesus held his tongue. You know, a wise man once said to me, nothing. Because <laughs> he held his tongue. <laughs> you know, to hold your tongue, and J James points that out, to hold your tongue is a big deal. To, to be on the cross and they're saying, if you're the son of God, come down the, from the cross. You better know what the purpose of a son of God is, that Christ is your example. Not to curse them and say, well, you know, here's the way this goes. You know, so just picture Jesus. He's on the cross. They're, you know, they're saying all this junk about him, and he goes, look, Here's the way this is going to come down. I'm up here on this cross, but when I come back, I'm going to come back and destroy every one of you. Okay. Now this, this is the way it's going to come down. Are you up for that? Or do you want to follow me now? Or he could just say, forget it. I, I have the ability to come down from the cross, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to take you out. I'm going to, you know, the guys that you chased off... <laughs> that are hiding right now, my disciples. <laughs> I'm going to save them. But you guys, you're in trouble now. And after I take care of you, I'm going to get back on the cross and die for them. <laughs> okay. What I'm describing is what goes on in your head. <laughs> and has gone on in my head many times. Um, so, the, the thing that is getting me about this is that this time, Peter is the leader of the disciples. At the, at, you know, he'd been that. Now, obviously, uh, James, the brother of Jesus now, another James, is now over the church in Jerusalem. But Peter had been the one who walked with Jesus and was looked upon as the, quote, unquote, the greater one. And whether you realize it or not, that's why James and John got their mom and came there to Jesus to talk him because there was some competition already going on with Peter. And so they said, you know, Mom, <laughs> go talk to Jesus. For me, for us, we're your sons. And Peter's kind of horning in on most of the, you know, Jesus's time, and he really has Jesus's ear. So, you know, here's the good news. James did become higher than Peter in the church, and then they killed him. 
Christ crucified in us is supposed to be, that's what that's supposed to be about. It's not just persecution for the gospel or a persecution because I'm a Christian. I'm being persecuted because I'm a Christian. The scriptures, the way it talks about it here, is that if you're persecuted as a Christian and you don't take it right, you know, then, you know, he's not pleased. But if you take it in a right spirit, Christ crucified, then it's well-pleasing. And what's well-pleasing? That you never get persecuted or you never are expected to have to uh, live the cross? No. What's pleasing to the Lord is when you're falsely accused. And you take it right. Wow. Really? Well, if that's really what pleases him, then guess what? He's going to send people to falsely accuse you. <laughs> and the reason why he likes it is because if you do it correctly, it's his son. It's, his, it's Christ crucified his son. It's the lamb, if you do it correctly. But if you don't, then what, he says, what thanks do you deserve? Just because, you know, well, I'm a Christian and they treated me wrong and this isn't right. He goes, well, that's, that's not thankworthy to, ha to be like that. Yeah. And that's where he comes up. That's all going right in front of this. So if you want to study it out, it's really good to look at because he's, I mean, he's, um, uh, but you're a chosen generation. Chosen for what? Okay, well, that, you can read that over in Corinthians. You know, for this you're called. You, this is what you're called to. And he even says it here. For here and two are you called. What is it? It's right in here somewhere. I didn't spend a lot of time because I wasn't planning on going off on that. But um, uh, it's in the third chapter. This is what you're called to. Okay, so we say my calling, my calling, my calling is um, to, you know, to live in this section over here. My calling is to live over here in the gospel section uh, pre-cross. I mean, if we could say it, that's the way, I mean, because we're going, well, I don't know about that cross. That's really bad. Okay. So I'm gospel's pre-cross ministry. Okay. <laughs> um, someone else says, I just don't, I, you know, most people say, I just want to avoid the cross. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. So I want to avoid that. So then, okay, well, I'm post-cross, resurrection life, miracles and blessings. That's, that's what I'm called to. Peter says, you're called to this, and here's the deal. This section is the best. This section is the best to God because he, he receives his son. He receives that spirit that's a sweet savor. See, we go, well, it's Jesus, you know, I'm ministering over, any, we can pick any category anywhere. I'm ministering here. And God is getting the sweet savor of Christ because, you know, I'm healing people and they're getting better and stuff like that. And do you, I mean, do you realize, do we realize what the sweet savor of Christ is? It's off an altar. Something is killed, thrown up on an altar, set on fire. And then the father goes, now there's a sweet savor. See, but we just think, I, I just waffled with the fragrance of, of Christ, you know, because I'm such a good Christian. You know. Don't you notice that, that sweet savor for me? And the father's going, no, I hadn't seen an altar around here in years with, with your, in relation to your life. He's looking for that son. That's what he's looking for. And this is what, why Peter's saying, 
For here unto you were, were you called, and there's that, that one, but it's also over here in chapter 3, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. Okay. All right, here we go. We're going to go back to the regular picture. I'm following in Jesus' steps. Okay, so let's, let's picture uh, Jesus walking the shores of Galilee. Okay? And he's walking the shores of Galilee right up on the beach, and he's leaving footprints in the sand. <laughs> And, and Peter is walking right behind him and putting his foot right where Jesus walked. You know, I'm following Jesus. This is what he wants. Jesus turned around. When, when Peter is rebuking him for talking about going to the cross, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You savor the things that be of men. If any man come after me, anyone, you know, this category, you're going to have to change your category. You see what I mean? This category, let him deny himself. It doesn't say deny yourself of things. Jesus never said let him deny himself of things. Yeah. So I'm spiritual because I, you know, I gave up my CDs. You know, next time you want to give up your CDs, give them to me. Anyway, you know, because we think giving up, you know, I'm denying myself of things. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to eat coconut cream pie anymore to the glory of God. <laughs> Give it to me, really, seriously. I, I encourage you to follow him in any way you see fit. <clears throat> These are the steps you follow in. These are the steps you follow in. And so all of the, so Jesus is walking with the 12. And they're going over here, and they go to this town, and they do the, this miracle, this thing happens, and then they go over here, and then they, and they cover all of Israel. They're going to all these places, and every place there's something different happening. And the disciples can say, wow, something different's going on all the time. And we're following Jesus to get there. Where are we going, Jesus? Um, Capernaum? You know. Let's go to Capernaum then. I'm with you. But when it's all said and done down here, and they say, well, we followed you. Didn't we do many miracles and this and that and whatever? And he says, I never knew you. You go, that ain't right. I was right there with you. I mean, that's kind of what they say. You know, that ain't right. I was there. You know that. You know everything. You know, since you're the ancient of days, are you getting Alzheimer's or something? You know? I was there. <laughs> Patty's going, you know, Randy, that's blasphemy, and you're going to go to hell for that. <laughs> but Jesus is going to say that. Why? Because he knows you in Christ. He knows you by Christ. He knows you in the the thing that the cross brought about and the thing that his nature brought the cross about with and the thing that his nature brings about in us today and the following is in relationship to that spirit that's what it's about it's in relationship to that spirit okay does that mean that if Jesus was here today and he said hey I want to go to Decatur that if you followed him it would it would be wrong it wouldn't be wrong if you had his nature and his spirit working in you. It would be wrong if you think there's something valid and holy about just following the man around. I don't know. I get in trouble all the time for this kind of stuff. And, well, I should. All right. You know what? I... We got a game coming up real quick here, don't we? <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. I ain't following you anymore. I'm, I'm looking.
looking for something I wanted to read to you. Uh, turn with me over to 2 Corinthians 4. But we have this, this uh, verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. All right. How many of you have ever heard that scripture before? Man, well, if you haven't, where have you been? <laughs> Especially in this church. All right. We always relate that sort of to the Acts section of this. And that is, we have Jesus in us. And we're still getting to do miracles and stuff like that. And, and again, I'm not against miracles. I believe in them. We, we can't exist without them. But it's sort of the Acts section of this in that we have Jesus in us now. He's not just with us. And we have, I'm born again, and I, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, okay? And that's the thought. That's it. I mean, that, you can add a little bit to that, but pretty much that's the concept of that scripture unless you read the context. We are, next verse, well, verse 7, we have, we have this treasure. Verse 8, we are troubled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, is the trouble the uh, treasure? No, I think that's pretty much the earth and vessel. <laughs> <laughs> we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Why? Because Jesus is Lord over my life and he takes care of these things and he will not allow this stuff to continue because he's strong and the devil is doing this stuff. It says that right here, doesn't it? No. Okay. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. The dying of this is the treasure is this dying one, this selfless one. That's the treasure. Yeah. I mean, it says it. It doesn't, it didn't, yeah. you know. But again, we're over here in the Acts part. Well, I got Jesus in me, and Jesus, you're my treasure. Why are we saying that? Well, Jesus, you're my treasure because you don't let bad stuff happen to me. Or Jesus, you're my treasure because, you know, when I get into trouble, you know, you bring me through it. You know. Or, you know, I can't even remember all the things that, that you say <laughs> in counseling. Um, <laughs> but, he, but the treasure has to become Christ crucified living and dying in us. And that's the treasure. So that's, that's not this area, and it's not the cross, and it's not Acts. It is here where he is the example. Of, the death of Christ is the example of life. That, that becomes a reality. That becomes something that we see so clearly that we go, okay, I, I give up this in the spirit that I had it in. You understand what I said? I didn't say you give it up. I said I give up this in the spirit that I had it in. I'm not taking anything away from you on that front. I'm pointing you to something that should be the thing that's working in us. I'm pointing us to something that we, we call the treasure for the wrong reasons we call it the treasure. Usually selfish reasons. 
And he's wanting, you know, Jesus walked this earth. He laid down his life constantly. He was always, you know, he was, I mean, he did it in everything. He, he went away to, you know, after he fed the 5,000 or whatever, he went away to spend time with his father, just to get away and spend time with his father. All the people show up and go, oh, you know, hey, Jesus, you know, like a bunch of zombies, Jesus, hey, hey. you know, and the big crowd just pressing and pushing and wanting and grabbing, Jesus, I'm a leper, touch me, stop touching me like that, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, but no, he lays down his life. Over and over. Well, we go, well, yeah, but when Jesus is resurrected, everybody's going to serve him. But that's not his spirit in us, is it? And the one main thing that it talks about Jesus in heaven, his ministry in heaven, Jesus is, what's going to be your See, I asked this question. That's how I know this stuff. You know, I went, what's going to be your ministry in heaven? He said, come boldly before me and you'll find help. So here it is. He's on a throne, all right, but everybody's coming and going, I need this, and oh, Lord, I'm coming boldly because I need help in time of need, and, da -da -da. and this is his resurrection ministry. Constantly giving to us still. I mean, that was a big shocker to me. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, he's still doing it. Jesus, stop it. We're supposed to be ministering to you now. <laughs> but he can't stop it because that's his nature. It's the nature of the lamb. He can't stop. So we go, well, Jesus is in me now. You better watch out because he's going to want to live a certain way. He's going to want to give a certain way. And it's always going to be, he never points to the miracles as not Jesus, not Peter, points to the miracles and things as the example of what he wants you to follow. He points to the cross. This is it. This is it. This is where I want to live in you in relationship to the cross. This is what's in my heart. This is what I ask you to make room for that Jesus. Make room for that Jesus. We, so we think, oh, well, this is, this is hard to be self-giving and Da, 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 da. Jesus said, come unto me and learn of me because you're not that way. And I will. <laughs> and my burden is light. And, you know, we go, oh, this is hard. This is so hard to be selfless. I don't, I can't do it. You know. <laughs> um, and so we, we just go, well, you know, instead of really finding the Lord in his heart and in his what's in his heart and then allowing him to do that himself we go well I don't like this teaching I think I'm gonna go to another church <laughs> and that's the easy way out isn't it yeah. you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna go find the church that fits me <clears throat> that fits me something that I that you know when I go in everybody goes oh you know what is it you need coffee <laughs> We got it over here. <laughs> Donuts, we got that, yeah. Why, why can't we do that here? <laughs> Mallory? Uh, with reference to being deceived about why Christ is in us, whether you give assigned reasons to that, like in the Acts section, something too that I've learned about when the Carmine goes is if I'm the one God's using, it's Christ in me, so God's using me. There's like this fusion of personal elevation with God has decided to use. You know, because, and that's Christ in me, you know. Right. The flip side is, well, God's not using, God's not using me, so it must not be Christ in me. Or there's some kind of a weird thing that goes there. But, you know, you have Paul in there towards the end. And, you know, all that stuff was happening in Jerusalem. It was so exciting, you know, and Peter, and they're all happening. It's Christ is in us, and we're preaching, and the band is back together. And Paul shows up, and they did not want him with them. Right. This is a great search. You have to check Galatians and Acts together and really follow it out. They basically said, thank you for showing up. Please go away. And he went to Boondocksville, where God was not moving, and he was not the one being used of God, and he's the one that learned the spirit. Right. He 
she learned it. And I just, I mean, it just lays it out. The two, the, the contrast there is amazing to me. So. <laughs> I was noticing in uh, <clears throat> Corinthians this, where he uh, was talking about he was being persecuted and people were saying you're not an apostle you're you're too weak you're too you know you're you know you, you just don't you don't carry yourself that way and so he starts telling them about things that he did now this is at the same time in Jerusalem where miracles and stuff were going on and they would just you know they could just overcome anything it seemed like and he uses the example of being let down in a basket to get out of Jerusalem as an example of his weakness that is matched by the nature of Christ crucified. He's using that as a proof that he's an apostle, that he has the right message and has the right life. And, and that's not the only example he uses. He's, he's the one who brings up the, the, the thorn in the flesh. And we always go, I'm glad he put that in there, you know, because I, I've gone through some things myself. He not, he's, not, he's not putting it in there for that reason. I mean, that's fine, that's, that's okay, but he's not putting it in there for that reason. He's putting that in there to continue to show them that it is, he is in weakness and he learned even in that. See, it never says he got delivered or the thing took off or anything. It says, I have learned in in whatever state I am, there to be content. I have learned to joy in tribulation and da 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 da. And it, because when I am weak, then he comes forth. See, then he comes forth. And so that so we're always trying to get strong. And we're always, you know. And Paul, and the, the amazing thing of what Mallory was just saying, you know, he drew. I mean, it took me a long time to begin to listen to his words in the light of Christ crucified because it's like we go to certain sections of the Bible and we we come there with um, with kind of an already baked in thought that those scriptures relate to Christ crucified. But I, you know, it took me a while because I would go to places like that and I'd go, well, where's Christ crucified in this? And he's going, yeah. All the other apostles, everybody was good, and I was let down the basket, you know. And and he's not lifting; he's he's making himself look like an idiot. No wonder they're going, "Well, this guy ain't an apostle," but he's glorying in his weaknesses and infirmities because that's the, he says the, that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Right here it says, "So then death worketh in me, that life might work in you." So just, you know, just to try to wrap up, it's like he really believes that. I mean, it's like he really, I believe this. I believe that this stuff is actually my friends. They work for me. Oh, yeah, he said that, but we all know that. We all know he said that in just the same chapter, actually, chapter 4 here at the end, that, you know, that a slight affliction worketh for us. He doesn't see it as horrible. See, he, we go, well, no wonder you only have light affliction. You should be going through what I'm going through. <laughs> you know, I mean, we find all kind of excuses. He's calling it light, not because it's light, but because he, it's, it has been transformed into something that allows him to go into the weakness that is Christ, the weakness of God. That's what it's called in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The weakness of God is stronger than men. And he believes that. And he believes, see, we'd say, well, I'll take the lower seat because Jesus asked me to, but I know he's going to bring me up further. Okay, well, your, your little death there, it's not pure. You, can't, you cannot have something planned that's going to exalt you. He will if your spirit's right. But your spirit, as long as you, it's almost like you're better off not knowing that, that he'll exalt you because you'll go, whoa, I'll do that then, you know, instead of, I don't care. I don't want you want to think about it. All I want to do is have his spirit in me in the lower seat and rejoice that everybody else is there and just go praise you. I'm with you, Jesus, way down at the other end of the table, you know, the, the upper seat or whatever. But you see, 
Jesus is in that lower seat too because he's in us. And that's what's really making the difference why we're there and the true spirit. We're carrying with us the true spirit of the gospel. It's the gospel. It's the gospel. I'm telling you, it's the gospel. And so, because, yeah, well, we say, well, you know, the gospel is that you're saved by grace. No, you're saved by grace that Christ may be revealed in you. Galatians 1 16 and 17, or 15 and 16, say that. I was called by the grace of God that he might reveal his son in me. What? What kind of wild teaching is this, Randy? It's not mine. It's right here. I just, you know, when I start really just twisting everything, you know, then you can start blaming me. But in the meantime, but you see, I had to face it too. And it messed with me. And it, some of it didn't even make sense. I couldn't even make it make sense in my brain because I was so carnal. Really, I'm serious. And I would try to formulate it. And I'd go, my carnal mind would go, bing! You know, it's like a, something that springs back into place every time. You know, and goes through the old patterns, the old ruts, you know. And I go, no, 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 no. That work and then really have to wait. I get it all set up and everything. Oh, finally, this is Christ. Bing! And they go back and I go, what is wrong with me? And I said that so many, what is wrong with me? I know that this isn't the right thinking. I know that's not the mind of Christ. And I know what the word says. Well, what's the answer? You, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So I'm going to just end with that, and I'm going to say this. How many of you have spent good concerted time within the last week? Good seeking. Don't raise any hands. That's, uh, how many of you have really just said, I, I want to know you, and I'm going to continue in your word? And you said, if I will, I will know you. I'll know the truth, and it'll make me something. It'll make me free, not set me free. It'll make me. So your mind doesn't go back to down. See, it's not about, you know, and we can say, or I could say, well, I was in the Word this week for the preaching this morning. And I was in the Word for Thursday night class, so I, I qualify for being spiritual. But am I seeking Him to be made free? Amen. Am I staying in the Word? First of all, am I staying in the Word? But then am I staying in the Word to be made something that He wants to make me? See, whatever the word free means, because you know Him. Yeah. <laughs> it may not mean, what? <laughs> you, know, it may, you know, it may mean, you know, but free to, to lay down your life, you know what I mean? So, so I'm just challenging you with that because that's, you know, there's no need to talk about all this other stuff if we're not going to do that, you know. And if Jesus says, if you continue in my word, that's conditional on us. If, then, if, then. No if, no then. So, recommit your hearts. Recommit your hearts to a new, fresh time. It doesn't have to be for hours upon hours, but a new, fresh time in a right spirit that says, I really do want to know you, and I want to continue in, in your word to be made free in, in whatever that means to you. Father, we ask you to just uh, move by your spirit in each one in this place and on Skype and Lord those that will listen to this later on just move upon us to have a, a, a concerted time in a right heart in the word and that you'll see our heart and you'll see that we're not just trusting that well I just never get time in the word so I'm, I'm trusting you to just fulfill everything that you said apart from what you said just do the in part, the then part, without the if part. So, Lord, we, we don't want to do that. We want to flow with you in your heart and in your way and in your spirit. So quicken us as a body, quicken us individually. And, Lord, just um, 
we don't want revival. We want to be revived to the true heart that you want out of us. So do that, and we'll be, we'll be satisfied, and I know you'll be satisfied. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Go watch the game. <laughs>